Hey there, in our previous video, we saw how the three basic building blocks of Redux work, the action, store and the reducer. And using these basic concepts, we created an implementation where we have a single reducer function and this reducer function takes in the initial state as a simple object which has counter and name as the values. And then it's handling three actions, which is increment, decrement and update name. Now the line which is actually creating the Redux store is this particular line here where we're calling the create store function over the reducer. Now if you notice in an example, we only dealt with a single reducer which is updating the state for a single object. But using Redux, we can also create multiple reducers which are taking care of their respective slices of data in the Redux store. So let me show you an example. What we want to create is something like this. Here everything remains same, but we've just added another reducer here called auth. Now remember reducer at the end of the day is just a function. Now this auth reducer is also taking an object as an initial state which has two key values logged in and username. So what we're just adding to our store is another slice of data, which is now being managed by another reducer called auth. And similar to our previous reducer that we created, this reducer will also be handling some of the actions which are specific to the particular slice of data that it manages. So let's say we have a new action type called login, which is just setting this logged in value inside the state to true. So to update this logged in state, we'll be dispatching a new action type here, which we are calling login. So let me just create a new action object with the type login, and then we'll be dispatching it to the store. And then the rest of the behavior remains the same. The store will call the auth reducer function. And there it will check how to handle this particular dispatch action. It will change the logged in value to true and then return the updated state. So now let's go ahead and implement this new reducer in our code and we'll be seeing how we can combine multiple reducers for the same store. So let's get into it. So here I am back on Visual Studio code. We'll be adding a new reducer function and calling it auth and every reducer needs an initial state. So let's go ahead and create our initial state for the auth reducer. So I'll say init auth is equal to Logged in default value is false and username is just an empty string. To our reducer, we'll pass the initial state just like we were doing here. But instead, we'll pass the new initial state that we just created. Now we need to handle the action type that this reducer is taking care of. So let's say there is an action called login. And whenever this action is triggered, we just want to change the logged in value to true. And after updating the state, we just want to return the new state. Also keep in mind to add the mandatory default case, which is return state. Now let's go ahead and add a few more action types. So I'll add one for logout, which is doing the same thing, but setting the value to false. Also we'll be needing one action to set the username. So we'll say if action type is set username, then just take the username that will be passed in the payload of the action object and update the state value with it. And then in the end, return the updated state object. So we are now done creating our new reducer. Next up, what we want to do is to combine these two reducers. And to do that, we'll be needing the combine reducers function, which is available from the Redux library. Now I'll show you how the function combine reducers works. So after we are done defining both of our reducers, down here, I'll call the combine reducers function. And to this, we'll pass an object. And this object will contain the reducers that you have created. So far, we have created two reducers. The first one is called reducer itself. And the second one's name is auth. Now, as a description here says, it combines different reducer functions into a single reducer function. So what this function call will return is a combined reducer. And let's go ahead and name this a root reducer. Now as our next step, while we are creating the store, we will pass this new root reducer that we created to create our final store. At this point of time, we're basically done with all the changes that we had to do to create multiple reducers. Now let's go ahead and test it. So here in our main.js, let's first create the new action objects that we just defined. So here now we have created the three action objects that a new reducer auth can process. The first one is the login, which has a type login. The logout action is similar. And then we have a set username, which has a payload object, which is carrying the username that we want to set. 
and to do that we'll be calling store dot dispatch on the new action objects login and set username. Now let's go ahead and run this script on our node environment. So we'll open up our integrated terminal here on VS Code and we'll run the script. So if you notice our store object now contains both these slices reducer and or we have dispatched login and set username as the third and fourth action and in the output after the third action logged in has been set to true and after the fourth dispatch username has been updated to john underscore one two three so that was it for this video we learned how we can use combine reducer to combine two or more reducer functions and manage multiple logically separated slice of data in our store now we're in a place where we can successfully plug this redux store into our react application and use this store as the source of our state values but before that we need to learn the last concept that's necessary to work with Redux in React and that's the immutability of your React state values. Now you must have definitely seen code like this where in React when we are updating our state we are always creating the copy of the state first and then setting it using set state. You must have definitely noticed the use of object.assign and the spread operator. Now all of this is being done because we can't change our state values directly. We always create a copy of them and then return the updated copy. Similarly in our Redux store, wherever we are updating state values, we need to keep in mind that we are not directly mutating the state. So in our next video, we'll talk about the concepts of pure functions and how reducers need to be a pure function. So this was it for the video and I'll see you in the next one where we'll discuss the immutability of state values and how to take care of that in our Redux store.